Hey, this is Neo Flight, and I'm coming to you from within a super flat world, a uh, big green open expanse. And the reason I'm starting here today is because my uh, my goal today is to go through the tools used to create add-ons in Minecraft. That's one of the questions I receive most is how do you make add-ons and where do I get this tool or that tool? So uh, I'm hoping to answer those questions today. I'm going to tell you each of the tools that I use to make an add-on, um, what it is, how it's used in a general sense, um, and then where you can get it. Uh, and how you might install that. So that's where I'm started. And the first one, the first tool, of course, is Minecraft itself. Uh, these super flat worlds are a good starting point for creativity when it comes to making an add-on of uh, your choice. And uh, so much can be done. There's so many great add-ons out there that are entirely command block based. And um, that's that's exactly what I wanted to show like to start with Minecraft because uh, Minecraft itself is a perfect tool for um, building add-ons now of course you can't get command blocks in your inventory even in creative mode you have to use the give command to give yourself a command block um, and that is basically all you have to do to install this type of add-on creation and everything can start from there okay so um that's it for within minecraft itself now i have some other add-ons i'd like to show you that um can add a, additional features and can be much more powerful because they are making use of scripting and different languages, mainly JSON, and then uh, there's some editors. So let's take a look at some of the uh, other tools available. First, I wanna show you the websites as tools. So let's take a look at four primary websites that I use when developing an add-on. Um, this website, the Gamepedia or the wiki for Minecraft is probably the one I go to the most. Um, it's very dense with information. It has most of the official release information. There's all of these reference guides um, that are here and those give you a lot more details about what you might do to create an add-on. There's also some additional tutorials and even um, your vanilla resource packs and behavior packs and other templates to build from. So uh, the, the wiki, the Minecraft Gamepedia wiki is one of my primary sources. Another official source, um, although not as detailed as maybe the wiki is minecraft.net. Um, and the, here's the web address here and all of these websites will be listed in the description. But there is, are a couple really good examples here. This Alien Invasion and Castle Siege. You can download those and look at their source code and see um, how they're built, what is being done inside the um, add-on itself. And then there's different instructions in here. So I don't use this page as frequently. Uh, maybe one day they will update it and I will be back here again. But it is another official source for Minecraft information. The next page I want to show you is the Minecraft tool site. And again, the website uh, address will be in the description. Go check it out. Um, but if you go to this site, there are a number of great tools here to help you create um, custom, custom elements within your add-on. Now you have to be careful. Some of these tools are geared more towards Java rather than Bedrock, and this video is um, tailored to Bedrock players and Bedrock developers. Um, but there are a lot of great tools here. I was just playing around with this custom crafting tool, and it seems to be um, something that you could make use of. Um, but there's a number of tools, and this is a very useful site. The last site I want to show real quick, 
quick is Dig Minecraft. Again, that website is in the description. But Dig Minecraft is another site that has a lot of information and a bunch of tools. And um, if you're looking for, say, like, oh, what is the name of that or how am I supposed to name that? Um, this is a good place for it. If you don't want to dig through the, the um, official wiki, there's also some information here that might uh, be a little slightly different, might give you a different perspective on it. So it might explain it in a different way that helps out. But uh, this is another great site to go to to get extra information about Minecraft for your add-on development. See, there's the name list right there. Okay, now we're going to transition from the uh, websites to some of the software tools that are useful in building Minecraft add-ons. And I would say the number one tool or the tool that I spend the most time using is bridge so what is bridge bridge is a I mean basically it's a JSON editor but it has been put together in such a way that it takes care of a lot of the guesswork or not guesswork a lot of the repetitive type of um, functions that you have to do automatically uh, it will build your JSON files um, for you and things like your manifest will be pre populated with all the necessary information if you are making a resource pack with it it will link those two together um, there's a number of pre-built-in templates that you can work from the best i guess feature of bridge is that it has these um, auto fill functions where say i'm i'm uh, editing an entity I can go in and when I select one of the components it will give me say some of the typical objects and things that might fit within that component so those can be automatically filled in there's error correction so it will alert you when something is not quite right um, and this is I, you know, like I said it's one of the best um, pieces of software out there and it takes a lot of the work and effort out of building Minecraft add-ons that would be there if all you were using is a normal text editor. There is a Discord server that you can join that has some really helpful people on it. Solve Dev is the creator of this map, and I mean not map, but of this um, piece of software, and he can uh, he often is very engaged in his Discord and will get back to you. I'm going to click the latest release here because I want to show you where you can get this piece of software. So if you go to um, the main page, which is the bridge page, um, then you can click the uh, download button. But I wanna show you uh, where to find it. So it comes up, if you go to the main bridge page, it'll look like this. And it's on GitHub and it's a little confusing. People ask, I've heard this question a number of times. How do I get bridge? How do I download it? It's a bunch of files. Well, yes, because it's on GitHub and it's a, an open source project, those files are available in case somebody wants to contribute to that project. But if you go down to the readme file down below, you'll see that there's a big blue icon that the bridge icon is there and you can click the download as the latest version. And that brings up the page that I was on before. And then um, again, you scroll down a little bit and it shows you all the different file formats that are available. Um, the EXE is the easiest one to go with. Uh, it downloads a small program that will download the rest of the program. Um, but if you already have, say, an archive extractor, then the 7-zip file is slightly smaller and won't take as long to download. I'm working with Windows 10, so I can't really help you when it comes to some of these other um, download um, files that are here because I don't use them. I only use the EXE, or if I want to save a tiny bit of time, if I'm on a slow connection, I will download the 64-bit version with uh, for the 7-zip, and then uh, I'm going to show you that piece of software later. So that's Bridge. Um, it's really one of the best tools you can possibly get 
and it will make making uh, add-ons so much easier. Another tool that I use is Notepad++. Uh, it's a text editor. It's uh, very, well, it's, it's fast, it's open source, it's free. Um, it, does, it doesn't take a lot of resources to run, but it is powerful at the same time. And I use it for a number of tasks, especially repetitive style tasks that can be a little bit more challenging in Bridge. Like if I need to create or tweak, maybe I've created 15 um, entities and they all have a certain thing within them that needs to be changed. I can do that very quickly through Notepad. It takes It's a little bit more time consuming to do it through Bridge because I would have to open up each entity and this will open up multiple files and allow you to change them all at once. Um, Notepad++, again, it's a free uh, software and so this is a download website for Notepad++. It's their homepage. The current version is listed right on the left hand side. They don't hide it, make it quite easy. You pick your whether or not you want the 32-bit or the 64-bit and you click on the installer. That's the easiest way to do it. Again, if you want to download an archive version, it's a little bit smaller um, and you can use it to update maybe a version that you already have installed. So that's Notepad++. Okay, another piece of software that I use is Visual Studio Code. Um, I, I don't use it as frequently as some of my other ones, um, but every now and then I find it useful. It's, it's commercially available for free. It's from Microsoft. Um, and so if I want to edit JSON using this tool, um, I can just go into it and edit the code. And it does have some warning messages that will show up to let you know that something is not standard or you have a comma out of place or you need to uh, add a comma. So there's some of those features in it. Um, usually I will use this when I need to edit um, a lot of different things within a single file. I, I might jump to that, say I want to change the name of a bunch of things that I know are repeated throughout or I need to look at a bunch of things like that. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's a powerful platform as well and I know it has much more potential than I'm using it for but um, it's a free piece of software from Microsoft Visual Studio Code and to get that you go to their website here is the download website for Visual Studio Code there's a great big download button for it um, and you can select it here that's available on Mac OS and uh, even on Linux. So if you have uh, another platform than Windows 10, this might be the way that you go to edit your JSON files for making add-ons. Okay, another piece of software that I use is 7-Zip. It is also open source and it's free. Uh, you can open up uh, Minecraft archives directly with it so I can open up an, an MC world file and edit within that file and then resave it so if I need to make a small change like you discover a bug or something that you want to catch before you send it out like once I found a typo in one of my text files so I was able to jump in there edit it with this and one of the text editors and get it saved and re packaged up very quickly. So 7-Zip is super valuable and to get that you simply go to their website. Their website is 7-Zip.org. Uh, so this is where you can get 7-Zip. You download one of the links here. Um, I tend to download whatever the newest stable version is in the 64-bit 60, version. So that's 7-Zip and that's another really good piece of software. All right, another tool that I use is called Universal Minecraft Editor, and what this is is an NBT editor software, and you can bring up your um, worlds within this, and it actually will bring up worlds that have been created on multiple platforms, Pocket Edition, Windows 10, even Wii U, and uh, the console versions of Minecraft. So if you have an old world that you want to convert, you can do it through here. 
Uh, I know that the creator um, has also created a converter to help convert worlds from multiple different platforms. And um, here is the homepage for Universal Minecraft Editor and you can download it here. Um, also, you can look into the converter here. I know the converter does cost something and uh, UMC is free, although um, I would recommend supporting uh, this this creator because this software will probably become pretty invalu al invaluable to you. But um, you can see that he has it all set up very nice. Um, the only issue I have with this sometimes is how it doesn't scale very well for certain screen sizes. Um, but there you can see uh, the copyright owner and the creator of that piece of software, um, Universal Minecraft Editor. And you can use that to like manipulate aspects of your maps. Um, once you create a map and then you maybe you want to, I don't know, create a super flat or uh, tweak some of the background settings that are not available in the UI, then this can do that. Okay, this is MCC Toolchest PE and this is another NBT editor and you can bring up your world files in it and then edit them if you choose. So here's the wait I can't bring that up because it's open right now um, so I could bring up say uh, this clade underworld that I have been playing and I can edit different aspects of that world um, which is something that I've used to fix uh, program fix worlds that have broken with updates I've gone into uh, MCC tool chest or universal minecraft editor to make changes to the world to make them um, compatible with the new, newer versions. Uh, this one is, they both have their pluses and minuses and uh, I use them for different, thi different things. And I'll go into more detail into that um, at another time when I am not doing a big overview like this, but I can tell you that each one has its benefits and its limitations. So you can find MCC Tool Chest PE at this website and download it by following the links on the page. Um, and it has actually some additional tools um, as part of it, but this Bedrock version is the one you're probably gonna want and will use most often, although there are some other things here that might be of interest to you as well. Okay, the next tool I wanna show you is paint.net. Now this is a paint program. It's available for free, but you can also get it on the Windows Store for a small fee, which is how I bought it um, or how I received it. I actually went to the store and bought it. Even though I knew it was available free, I just wanted to support the developers on this. Um, anyway, you're gonna want a pretty good paint program to be able to change the skins and textures of different files, and this is a free um, application that can help you do that. It has um, layering features and it's a good it's a good program for that so let me show you uh, to find this if you just go to paint get paint.net again that link will be in the description and then pick the download and uh, download the file so not oh actually don't pick those those aren't the actual download right you can go to the Windows Store that is the easiest and most reliable way to get it you can also donate um, but uh, look for the actual download file right here. Yeah, that's the one we want. Okay, so be, don't get don't get sidetracked by all those green buttons. <laughs> all right, the next piece of software that I want to show you is Blockbench. Now, I do not spend much time using Blockbench because I'm not much of an artist, and so modeling is just not my thing. Uh, but here is, this is a powerful program. I have used it for one or two items um, along the way as I've made add-ons. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not where I spend most of my time. It is a powerful piece of software and it is also available free. And I'll show you, you just go to the blockbench.net website. It's open source and you click the download buttons there and that will 
uh, get you to the um, actual installation file and you can install it for yourself play around with it 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 really is good software I wish I knew more about it but um, look at that there's even a, a Mac OS version and Linux version so those of you using other platforms you have uh, a great opportunity here to make add-ons through Blockbench Okay, the last piece of software I want to show you that I have made use of in making add-ons is Audacity. Audacity is an audio editing piece of software. It allows you to easily uh, record and trim pieces of audio so that you can make um, different sounds for Minecraft world. So if you wanted to say have some custom um, sounds inserted or you have you create something brand new maybe you create a machine and you need a, a machine type sound you can record those or find them off the internet and then edit them in audacity so audacity is uh, open source and they have a download for Windows Mac Linux right there on their home page and um, I'm sure there's a lot of great information about how to make use of the program in the best way possible. Uh, I haven't played around with it a ton. I've just used it for some very small file conversion and editing projects, which I may show later on as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to add-on creation tools. And um, here we are back within Minecraft. I just want to say thank you for watching and if this series is something you're interested in if there's a particular tool you would like me to look at uh, please go ahead and leave those those pieces of feedback in the comments if you think this video was helpful please like it please share it uh, subscribe to my channel so that when I release a future uh, tutorial type video on add-on creation you will be notified thank you for watching bye now